glycosylated hemoglobin A1C or hemoglobin A1C or HGbA1C. There's a lot of ways to say this this uh, lab value, but it's a very important lab value for evaluating long-term management of diabetes. A normal range for this A1C for a, a healthy person and everything would be 4.0 to about 5.5%. For a diabetic, we're really trying to keep them below 7% or so. All right, and this is gonna vary widely by hospital, it's gonna vary widely by the method drawn, but really the number you should probably know is, is six or eight percent, six to seven percent for a diabetic is where they wanna keep it below. Anything over seven or so is gonna be something we're going to be concerned about uh, if the patient is monitoring and managing their diabetes well. Glycosylated hemoglobin, what that really means is it's a combination of glucose and hemoglobin, okay? And that combination turns into a ketamine. And we know that the lifespan, the life cycle of a red blood cell is about 120 days. And the rate at which this combination of the glucose and the uh, hemoglobin happens is in direct proportion to the amount of glucose in the bloodstream. And so it's going to bind and, and combine with that hemoglobin and then it's going to have the lifespan of that red blood cell or so, around the 120 days. So because of this, it gives us really a long-term picture of how this the patient is managing their diabetes. And what's really helpful with this is it's not going to be impacted by if the patient takes their diabetic med medications right before the test or exercises or fasting or anything right before the test. This is going to give us that long-term picture. So the patient could give the image or whatever that they're they're managing it well and everything, but we come in, we draw their A1C and we see their level is a nine or something like that. We understand that, you know, we need to adjust either diet, we need to adjust medications, we need to adjust things in the, in the patient's regimen in order to manage this diabetes a little bit better. So again, the reason this is going to be ordered is going to be just to, to really get a good picture of long-term management of diabetes uh, as well as just kind of see trend over a long period. So obviously we're going to see this elevated in poorly controlled or completely uncontrolled diabetes. There are some conditions where we'd see this actually decrease and, and those types of conditions would, if you think about what this, this is, you know, this combination of glucose and hemoglobin, we would see it decreased in conditions where there's a decreased lifespan of red blood cells uh, and also hemolytic anemia and pregnancy would be uh, conditions where we'd see this decrease. But what you really need to focus on is numbers over seven in a diabetic patient would indicate poor control. And then just kind of understanding what it is, you know, in, the, in that lifespan of the red blood cell and everything will help this really stick in your mind forever and you're not going to forget it. But our normal value is about four to five percent or so. And for a diabetic patient, we really want to keep them under uh, six or seven percent. Uh, and anything over that is going to indicate poor control of their diabetes.